more than 100 schools have been closed down in Detroit over the last 20 or so years. Um, that's more than five schools per year. So when driving around Detroit, you're usually only a few minutes from a school that's been closed down. Here's one of the closed down schools. And you can see it's all boarded up here. Already there's another closed school. Frank Cody is one of the lowest performing high schools in Detroit. It consistently ranks in the bottom fifth percentile on state exams. And last year, the state threatened to close it down if test scores didn't improve. How has your experience been at Cody? We don't got enough advisors. We don't got enough electives. We don't got enough resources to make our education better. Like. We don't got no art class. They took that away. We don't have, like, all of us don't get Spanish class. Only certain 11 graders get Spanish class. And I feel like our teachers don't help you with what you need help with, because we got seniors who can't pass their classes right. What do you guys want to be when you graduate? What do you want to do for work? What are your dreams for your future? Uh, me personally, I want to be a, become a WNBA all-star, superstar, okay. everything. No, no. Okay. I want to do all in the whole nine yards. I'm trying to get my mama out of here. I just, that's, that's what I want to do. But if that don't go well, I want to become a lawyer. I want to be a veterinarian because I love animals, all kinds, okay. missing, wild, all that. You like science class? Oh, well, not really, but you know, I'm going to get there. Okay. I'm going to get there. All right. Raise your hand if you went to a school that's now closed. Every single one of you. Wow. But it's not just Detroit. Public education across the country has been in a state of crisis for decades. Diane Ravitch served as Assistant Secretary of Education under George H.W. Bush. She's one of the leading experts on education in the country. What has happened to the education system over the past 20 years has been the, the growth of a very powerful movement to privatize public education. We've seen a narrowing of the curriculum so that many schools, in an effort to raise their test scores, drop the arts. Many schools uh, drop physical education all because No Child Left Behind was the federal government saying that if you can't get your test scores up, uh, you will be punished. It's the standardized testing that sets up schools for privatization. As school choice gained momentum, the largest growth has been charters, privately run schools funded with public money. No one had any evidence that charter schools were better than public schools, but nonetheless, they were proposed as a remedy. When students leave traditional public schools and go to charter schools, how does that affect the, not only the school district, but the communities? In district after district across the country, we've seen the growth of charters accompanied by uh, the loss of funding to the public schools, meaning that they have to cut. What people don't realize when they hear charters is that every dollar that goes to charter and vouchers is a dollar taken away from public schools. The governor of Michigan, the Honorable John Angler, one of the first states to embrace school choice was Michigan, where 25 years ago, the state radically overhauled its public education system. Ladies and gentlemen, public education is a monopoly, and monopolies don't work. As market competition was introduced, Michigan's education system became one of the most deregulated in the country. In Detroit alone, close to 100 charter schools have opened since 1995, while nearly 200 traditional public schools have shut down in the same time. One third of the district schools need to become charters if they're to survive. This place is now on borrowed time, set to close June The end of an era for West Michigan's largest school district as students and staff said a final farewell. If you close all the public schools in your area and you pop up two or three charter schools, what is the choice? You have no choice. Aaliyah Moore grew up in Detroit, where she's now raising her two daughters. She started fighting for public education after the state closed her neighborhood school in 2013. It was almost like if we can get rid of these schools, then we can get rid of this district and charter it out. When charters first came to the city, it was like, don't send your children to filthy public schools. Go to nice charter schools, nice academies. Our children are dressed in uniform. Our children walk on blue lines. And it was more of a, uh, to me, a prison or jail mentality, you know, not really open to parent input and involvement. You know, just get the dollars, get the kids. And even if our school fails, we can close down and open another one in another name. It's a business. 
What do you say to those who, who say that they want to give families like yours school choice? That kind of angers me when I'm hearing that so much now. Choice, choice, it's a choice. This was my choice. At the center of Michigan's experiment in school choice is current Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. The DeVosses are a powerful force in conservative politics, both in Michigan and around the country. Since lobbying to introduce charter legislation, the family has spent an estimated $7 million promoting the unregulated expansion of choice. And with Betsy DeVos now working in the White House, her model may be representative of what's to come nationally. Do you believe parents should be able to choose the best school for their child regardless of their zip code or family income? Yeah. Me too. And so does President Trump. Former state representative Lamar Lemons has seen the influence of the charter lobby in the Michigan House firsthand. How strong is the charter lobby here? It is extremely uh, uh, strong, and, and particularly that Betsy DeVos and the DeVos family uh, essentially spearheaded. Betsy DeVos has said that public schools here are financially and educationally unsuccessful. She suggested retiring DPS. Does she have a point? No, she does not. In fact, she helped undermine DPS with her influence with the state legislature. Did the state government intentionally close down hundreds of traditional public schools in order to create opportunity for charters? I believe so, because no one would attend them if our schools were performing as they were. So they had to create a crisis and then drive the children, we call them educational refugees, into the for-profit charter schools. But the charter schools, as, in, in, as a rule, don't perform as well as the public schools. Nationwide, studies have shown that most charter schools haven't produced better results than traditional public schools. In Michigan alone, about 80% of charter schools perform below the state average. And as they've expanded, Michigan has dropped to dead last in terms of educational improvement and is the only state to have regressed in the past 15 years. But the DeVos family has continued to advocate for school choice. They even founded their own charter school in their hometown of Grand Rapids. We're at West Michigan Aviation Academy and this 18-year-old student is about to fly us in this plane. a little bumpy today. I'm Leo Mike, what's your on course heading to Romeo Sierra Kilo? That's it, first education. Dave is a senior at West Michigan Aviation Academy, one of the best charter schools in Michigan. I have to say Dave's pretty good, especially given the weather conditions. Another round comes all the way over to the right. Hold it here, hold it off the ground. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Good, pretty nice crosswind landing. Nice landing, Dave. For those who understand the traditional public school model more so than this one, you're essentially the superintendent of this one school. Correct. As the CEO, which I don't love that title, but that's the title that I have, um, they expect me to run the operation. And there's very little bureaucracy. Um, they expect, you know, short briefs on things that are happening here. So is it kind of more structured like a business? Yeah, I think it's more of a business model, more of a board of directors, more of a corporate feel to it. We have a lot of teachers that are fresh from college, and so they are relatable for us high school students, and they dedicate so much time. What I love most about this school is the opportunities that it provides for everyone. Like, whatever you want to do, the school helps you get to that goal and it helps you find where you are in society and, like, what you want to be. I know you have a diverse student population. I'm noticing all the pilots are white. Why is that? It's the ones who've made it through the program. We, uh, we have more diversity in this current uh, pilot class and it's something that we'd love to have is more diversity and more females. Okay. Well, and we're very cognizant of that. Mm -hmm. And we do have now in the pipeline this year, not in that picture, our first African-American student who, who sold. But getting into charter schools like this one isn't easy, something we saw at their annual admissions lottery. First name is Avery Walter, Kendall Springborn, Ashley Escobar, Sarah Herwire, number 70, Matthew Kleinstra, Charles Cordes, 
Number 147, Tyler Azar. Gosh, that's so nerve-wracking, huh? <laughs> What were you thinking as you saw those 140 whatever names go up? I thought I was not going to get in at all, because that was 147. 147 out of? Uh, I think 155. 155. Wow. The debate over school choice has reached a boiling point across the country. While Betsy DeVos declined our request for an interview, her husband Dick DeVos, one of the most powerful education lobbyists in the country, agreed to sit down with us. Over the last few months in reporting this story, we've seen some really impressive charter schools, including yours. We've also seen the effect that charters have had on traditional public schools. Does that concern you at all? Well, I think, I think there has been effect of, of charters on public schools, and my hope is that that effect has been positive, that the effect has been that traditional schools, having been confronted with uh, an alternative that they were never confronted with before, uh, that 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 will have them take a look at themselves and say, how can we be special too? I've talked to low-income uh, parents who I know would be offended by that because they feel like the influence that your family has over the Michigan State Legislature has caused their public schools to be shut down. Okay. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate their perspective. The, the answer is we, we don't. We haven't. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how... I don't know how they can come to that conclusion, for, in a, in, fairly speaking. I think that lobbying for pro-charter legislation, funding campaigns of candidates who are voting strictly pro-charter, contributing to the Michigan Republican Party, whose stance on education is pro-charter, um, I think those would be their reasons. Okay. And they feel like the, the rise in charters is defunding their public schools. I think that's what they would say. Yeah. And, and I appreciate the point of view, you know, and, and, and I respect that. I respect their point of view. On average, when you look across the country, charters don't outperform traditional public schools. How do you sort of push for growth of charters when we don't know they're any better than traditional public schools? Why are parents choosing charters? Nobody's forcing them to go to a charter school. If parents weren't choosing charters, charters wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. Parents are making these decisions, not bureaucrats, not me, not you. Parents are choosing these alternatives because apparently they think they're better for their children. My hope is not that one does better than the other, my hope is that they all do well. Mm -hmm. The nature of competition, though, is not everyone wins. The nature of competition in education is that potentially everybody wins. 100 schools were closed in the last 20 years. That's not winning. Children are getting a better education as a consequence of new options and new choices and new possibilities. That is winning. Mm 